So today I'm going to be looking at a, a, a mini PC. This is one that you'd probably want to use for something like a home server. Maybe a small uh, Linux machine that would handle things like DNS or uh, free radius. Maybe even a home, uh, a home theater PC. Uh, because there's a number of things that are included with us that would help you. And, and so let's talk a little bit about kind of the machine itself. So as you can see, it's it fits in the palm of my hand. It's There are other machines like this one that are somewhat smaller, but this one has quite a bit more in terms of I.O. There's no bananas and there's no pencils, no, ra no, no raspberry pies that are near it. So yeah, it's just my hand and it's right there. So Camry, Camry, I, Camry, I guess the, is a, it's the Esnix L E1 mini PC. You can see kind of the, the way the makeup of it and you can see the, uh, the kind of the copper layer that's going around. Uh, there is a, a sizable gap. I'd say it's about two millimeters maybe. Uh, in order to allow uh, the the cold air to move in and and cool off those fins, the that is one first class cooler that is on that thing. Uh, yeah, we talked a little bit about the CPU, 3.6 gigahertz. That is turbo mode, four cores, and the the Intel graphics is a 24 EU UHD. Uh, four threads and a six megabyte uh, L3 cache, and the TDP is 15 watts, and that is max. Two USB 3.2, uh, two USB 2.0, 3.5 um, uh, millimeter audio jack, one gig Ethernet, HDMI. I'm not sure of the version. Uh, DPMI 1.4, Bluetooth 4.2, and a dual band Wi-Fi. Uh, expansion, 16 gig uh, of DDR RAM, single channel. You can expand the, the uh, SSD up to two terabyte, uh, and it does come with Windows 11 Pro. Uh, video up to 4K at 60 Hertz, and it does support dual displays. The dimensions are about four inches by four inches by about 1.1 inches tall. Not a big unit, not a not a great big unit. It includes the, of course, the unit itself, because of the user manual and, of course, the beast amount as well. We'll see how long. There we go. It's booting. See how long it takes to boot to the login screen. That's not too bad. A new review on a hardware on a, on some hardware and a new review on. Ubuntu 2504 at the same time, just released today. I'll probably come back and do a more in-depth review on this. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to establish this, this machine is supposed to be able to run Linux. We're going to experiment around with today, and, uh, and we'll, we'll give that a try. So let's get, uh, let's get Ubuntu set up. Okay, let's uh, let's take a, a look at some uh, some of the usual things that we take a look at on a on a, either a new machine or a new distribution. And in this case, we have both. So let's take a look. So I'm going to run fast fetch first and see what it tells me. Ubuntu 2504, and this is the official release, not a beta. This is uh, we're running a Linux kernel 614, which again is the latest as well. Uh, also running GNOME 48, which is also the latest as well. All brand new stuff. So what do we have here? We have an Intel N97. Now that is actually a 12th gen Intel CPU, but it just uses the efficiency cores. Let's take a look at the memory and the desk. So the first I want to look at is how much storage in Ubuntu is taking up. So 11 gig, I don't have a lot installed other than my normal stuff like glances and uh, yeah, Linus and some of those things. So yeah, it's taking quite a bit of room. Let's take a look at memory. Memory, we've got one gig in use. Now I did see this earlier around 800 gig. 
So I have been running some things, so it's possible I've driven it up a little bit. Memory in use is 1.32 gig, which, yeah, for Noam, that's about right. I mean, that's just a, it's a lot less than it was last time I looked at it, which was at uh, Noam 47. So they are trying to reduce it again, which yeah, it could, yeah, they could definitely do that. I think I want to run Linus, so let's go take a look at see what we got there. This uh, this looks at the hardening level of the operating system. This has got nothing to do with uh, the computer, per se, but it does have to do with how well Ubuntu is laying things down. All right. Ooh, we've got lots of messages there. Uh, 67 is the score. Anything below 70, of course, is failing, a security hardening score. So it did 266 tests. Let's take a look at some of them, we have a pretty long list. So we got about a, uh, on a single core, about 1285, and for uh, multi-core, 3048. That's pretty respectable uh, for this size system. On HD, it's not bad. It's not it's not dropping much, if any. Buffering. Let's see how well it handles this. This is supposed to be able to handle one drop frame. Six, nine, eleven. Yeah, when it's having to redraw the frame. Uh, it says it's 1920, the viewport, which it is, but the video is coming down 3840 by 2160 by 60 uh, frames per second, so... So my final thoughts on this device, I think this would make both a, a good, a, you know, a, a good video server for being able to watch movies at home or even read audio books or listen to music. Uh, the fact that it has the hangers, you'll notice there's two holes here uh, that hold this onto the visa mount. So yeah, the amount that way or this, I guess, yeah, it would be mounted upside down, but that's all right. Uh, that way, your, your, most of your cables are coming out the bottom instead of out the top. So, yeah, it's a good box. I uh, The performance of it for its class and price range is very good. It's, it's impressive for what it's able to do. So, I think uh, with that, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is uh, the... Uh, Cam Rui, uh, the E1. I'm DJ Ware, and thanks for watching. Bye for now.